All the voices you are about to hear come from the head and face of Daimin Slash. Damien Slash. This is Chanting Lads with their incredible new album, Lager, 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 including the hit singles, Vardy's On Fire. Vardy's on fire. No defense is very fine. Vardy's on fire. The referee's a wanker. And the number one smash hit. Let's pretend we scored a goal. Let's pretend, let's pretend, let's pretend we scored a goal. Chanting Lads, brand new album, out now. How would I describe them? Well, they're hip hop meets skin graft meets world music meets vaporwave meets drillcore meets thunderclash meets Atlanta trap meets new wave hype meets Catalonian independence meets K pop meets Razorlight meets blastcore meets river dance meets naked babies meets two bags of onion rings stapled to a sofa meets the sound of a manatee choking on a hairbrush meets elbow the body part not the band meets Iggy Pop meets Moldy Mop meets the sound of Piers Morgan trying to break a curly whirly in half with a hammer meets new mode meets vlog spam meets Hillary Clinton's LinkedIn profile, and we're confident they're going to do really, really well. Damien, Damien, slash. Master Chef, searching for Britain's best amateur cook. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Sophie has chosen to cook an existential idea using the works of John Paul Sartre and a previously refuted existentialist theory written down on a raw sheet of papyrus. I do not understand this dish. I can't get my head round it. There don't seem to be any answers inside. I love it. During the month following bonus season, I like to unplug from the cat race by taking an indulgent holiday in an exotic yet soulless tax haven. Last year, I went on a four-week tour of the Cayman Islands in a golf buggy, stopping off at various bamboo-clad beach bars to take in different angles of the same sea and take the piss out of the waiters. Drinking would usually start at dusk and end with a blackout around 4pm, at which point I would be hooked up to an electrolyte drip and taken to the nearest medivac to fend off fatal amounts of dehydration. Midway through the trip, my personal travel guide Rico suggested loosening my mind by snorting psychedelic frog sweat through a hollowed out crab's claw. Within a split second of chaffing up the bright green powder, I was separated from my body entirely before ascending a trillion miles upwards into infinite space at the speed of light. There in a visionless realm of total nothingness, I experienced what the tribal elders described as a hammer to the balls from God. As soon as my body had processed the frog spunk, I woke up to an uncanny sense that dedicating my life to money had been a catastrophic waste of time. However, after a few glasses of champagne and a sea turtle soup, it soon became clear that this so-called God was not only grossly ill-informed, but probably a resentful crusty who should have got a proper job when they had the chance, instead of faffing around with worthless things like art or love. Good night, Dad. Good night, offspring. Damien Slash. From PayPal to outer space. Smell like a billionaire. Elon's Musk. A fragrance for men. Greetings, noobs! As an elite pro gamer with a digital and largely nocturnal lifestyle, finding the time to forge a meaningful relationship in real life is harder than defeating a level 99 space marine with nothing but a longbow and a couple of lightning bolts. But fear not, minions, for I, Lawrence the Gamer, aka Fedora Borealis, aka Lord Regent of the Incels, have figured out an unbelievable life hack for meeting up with smoking hot gamer chicks on a regular basis. All with a little help from a certain mobile application called Tinder. So, aren't ye ready to gain XP in the game of casual sex? Behold my pro gamer guide to beating the Matrix and spending time with the fairest maidens in the swipersphere. Step 1. Photos Google the phrase dark and handsome guy on a motorbike. Upload these hunky images to your Tinder profile and add a humorous bio. For example, I'm a crouching tiger with a hidden dragon. <laughs> now sit back and relax. 
Step 2. Arrange the rendezvous. Obviously, your average normie wireman isn't going to come straight to your battle station without making sure you really are an elite gamer. This is why it's essential to wait until the dreaded day orb has set before jumping on your hoverboard to meet your mage in person. Yes, milady, milady, milady. <laughs> it is I, Lawrence, the fourth highest ranking StarCraft player in Europe. Methinks you were expecting me, were you not? Sorry, are you supposed to be Jason? Wow, your eyes are like ice mage plasma portals. Jesus Christ. Do you know you, you can't actually do this to people? I was wondering if you'd uh, care to join me for a couple of lion bars and a yazoo in the enchanted woods. Well, the park. Hello? Yeah, I need the police. I'm being harassed by someone. Fine, I must away! So, there you have it, noobs. Lawrence's Gamer Guide to Online Dating. You're welcome, peasants. XP gained. We've made a mattress for the new generation. The online real-time make a change generation. Because you're the you generation. The next iteration. We've made a mattress that stands up to hate and never shies away from the fight of our lives. Because sleep equality is more than our philosophy. The sleep economy's a trickle-down monopoly. And spring-loaded minds will sell as bed spring lies. They will try to shut us out, shut us up, silence the voices of the memory foam community in the name of what used to be. Say foam's a fantasy, but we've got minds to see. When we go to sleep, on two layers of woke tech oxyflow bed foam, we know that true sleep is for everyone and real change has to start at foam. So raise a glass and lumbar support a movement. Raise up a mattress that doesn't care where you come from, who you love or how you look. A mattress for the many, not a bed for the few. A mattress for the change makers, the pocket spring takers, the fight back with a tap on the haptic screen believers. The king-size topper soldiers, the hypoallergenic dreamers, the renegade resistance kids who bring the rightness to the fight without leaving their beds. Woke mattresses, be the change you want to sleep. Available in selected stores from 999.99. Finance options available at 35.5% APR. Mattresses not recyclable and not returnable. Mattress contains BPAs, palm oil and non-perishable polystyrene peptides. T's and T's apply. <laughs> Master Chef. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Care worker Anthony has made a West End musical using the works of Elton John set against the backdrop of the Rwandan genocide. For me, it's completely tasteless. And that's a real shame because the music is a delight. I love it. <laughs> Baby, you'd hate to slash. Right, so what kind of work experience do you have? And, uh, you know, last week I put a grand down on Djokovic winning the tennis and he bloody lost it, so then I had to put two grand down on Roger Federer not wearing his little jacket and I made the money back and said, so you win some, I lose some, and that's the way it goes, you know what I mean? And I said, well, you know, why don't you get a real job, Joe? Why do you get a real job? And I said, well, I wouldn't be making enough money, would I? And I said, well, you're losing a lot of money now, Joe. And I said, no, but I'm also winning it back. And I said, well, what about your children, Joe? What about children? I said, Cheltenham? They said, no, children, Joe. I said, no, 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 don't want children, don't need them, do you know what I mean? And they said, well, Joe, I think you're a bit of a loser, mate. And I said, well, maybe I am a loser. Maybe I am. But every now and then, I'm a winner, do you know what I mean? Right. And I was down at one of these fancy restaurants in Ealing with my lord the other day, and I said to the waiter, I said, I bet you £10, the food don't come for 10 minutes. He said, well, the food's already here, mate. Food's already here, do you know what I mean? It's pick up and go. I said, oh, well, I lost that one then. Here's 10 quid. He said, no, I don't want your money, I don't gamble. I said, no, take your money, take your food and piss off, because I'm not interested anymore, do you know what I mean? And I walked out of there, got in a cab, and I said, I bet you 15 quid, you can't get me back to Walthamstow before the counter it's 15 quid. And it was a penny over 15 quid, and I had to pay him 30. So I didn't have to get in another cab, but I said, I bet you 60 quid, you can't get me back to where I just was in under 10 minutes, and it took him 15 minutes, and I wanted all the money back, do you know what I mean? You win some, you lose some, and that's the way it goes. Right, so any other work experience at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, I worked down the local fish market for a couple of months. Right, so you were a fishmonger. No, 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 I was bitten on the way to the crabs. <laughs> all right, so first of all, have you ever been hunting before? Uh, we do a bit of pheasant hunting back home. Suffolk, UK. Right, well, I don't know what your budget is, but I recommend starting with something like a springbok or an antelope. Well, actually, we really had a hot set on a dolphin. Well, look, we don't have any dolphins here, bro. We are nearly 1,000 miles from the nearest ocean, so. And you don't have any dolphins in the lakes? A, there are no lakes around here. And B, you don't get dolphins in lakes, okay? So, but we absolutely could do a crocodile if that's something you want to do. Mm, I 
bleeding like crocodiles. And we don't really know what they are, to be honest. But no. Oh, God, we really came here with our hearts set on a dolphin. A dolphin. I um, don't know what to do now. Um, no. What do we do? I mean, can you suggest something? Yeah. Classiest thing we got to a dolphin? Probably a hippo. Oh, I don't like that. Have you got a menu or something? Mm. Absolutely. Here you go, bro. This is a complete list of all the animals you can shoot. Really, anything you want, we've got. It's yours to hunt. No problem. Are these arranged by price or...? That's correct, yeah. At the top, you've got your leopards and your male lions. They're going for about half a mil a pop at the moment. Right, and what about this one at the very top? The very top. That one at the top, that's my name. It's my company. It's my business. I'm running the park, so obviously I'm not on the menu myself. <laughs> that would be very bad for business. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Really? So if we, you know, paid a bit more, we couldn't... Uh, there's no way we, we could... could we know, could, um, Okay. Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> Two million dollars. How about that? You take me home, put me on your wall. <laughs> we could, we could do that. We could do that. All right, joke's over. I mean, we just wanted to do something a bit, you know, different. Yeah, you know what I mean? something a little bit different. Look, I'm not going to walk out there and let you shoot me in the face. Okay? It's not going to happen. All right? So, you know, what if we were to pay double? Double. You want to pay double? Mm, triple. Maybe we could do eight. Mm -hmm. I'm not having this conversation, bro. Okay? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. $16 million, right, you're serious. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna walk out 50 yards, you get the rifle lined up, and then you take the shot, okay? Amy, right for the head, all right? Brilliant, mate, thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much. No problem, bro, you make the shot count. Oh, God, oh my God, oh my, oh my God. God. Feel my heart, feel my heart, man, oh feel my, my heart. God. Okay, you can do this, babe. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Oh, look, wow. look at that. That is insane. Oh. <laughs> take a story, take a story, yeah, take yeah, a story. Yeah, no, I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, oh God. God. That's so messy. <laughs> oh, my God, Lydia, look. It's a dolphin. <laughs> Damien Slash. <laughs> Master Chef. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Next up, for his place in the final, convicted sex offender Gareth has lubricated his thighs using mashed potato and a scalding hot onion gravy. Your presentation's all over the place, and I don't know what that is in the middle of it all, but I'm not putting that in my mouth. I love it. The truth is, the only way to combat hate against the troll community is with more hate. After all, it works for everybody else. That's why we in the troll community have launched a new initiative in partnership with Amnesty International to protect the rights of trolls to hate without hate. The hashtag is hashtag hate the haters, and so far it's gained 43,000 retweets and likes from prominent leaders in the community such as Katie Hopkins, who herself was born troll and has suffered tremendous abuse as a result of her troll identity. And really, more needs to be done in schools to ensure troll children feel safe. If a child is caught bullying someone and calling them names, we should consider welcoming this child into the troll community early on so that they don't end up deeply and dangerously confused later on. Tell them it's okay to be a troll. We need to provide a safe space for that child to be who they are. You know, if we can't tolerate the intolerant, I see us moving into a real nest of vipers for quite some time. The Damien Slash Mixtape was written and performed by Daniel Barker, with guest appearance by Natasha Dimitru. The producer was Matt Strong. It was a BBC Studios production.